Amen. Uh, here in Proverbs chapter number 13 and verse number 1, uh, the Bible talks about a wise son. Uh, the Bible said, a wise son heareth his father's instruction. So the scripture talks to us about wisdom and a wise son and what a wise son will do. Uh, now I would say to you that, that a wise person in general, there are many things, there are many good things that wise people uh, should do. Uh, wise people should go to church. Amen. Yeah, should go to church. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, they, and certainly there are times when it's easier to do that than, than others. And certainly times when it's safer to do that than others. But ultimately the New Testament tells us that we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Right. And so when it is possible, we should gather together in the house of God. And that would put us in the category of wise people. Yeah. Now why should we do that? Well, we should do that because when we go to church, we get edification. When we go to church, we get in the presence of God. When we go to church, we get in the presence of one another. We get to encourage each other and love on each other and uh, praise God and give Him glory and say thank you Jesus for all that you've done and thank you for the food on my table and the clothes on my back and the protection over my life. Just thank you God and we get to gather together in the house of God and that would classify every one of us in the category of being a wise son or a wise daughter. And it's also wise I think to love Jesus. Amen. That's wise. Uh, amen. I don't think it's wise now this is controversial but especially in this generation but I don't think it's wise to love Buddha. I don't think it's wise to love Allah. I don't think it's wise to love Confucius but I do think it's wise uh, to love Jesus. Amen. And I just have a question for you. Do you love Jesus? Amen. I do. Hallelujah. He's good to me. He has saved me. He has cleansed me. He has washed me in his blood. He has sanctified me and changed my life and given me the word of God and given me hope of eternal life. And man, I thank God for Jesus. And, and I just want to tell you, Jesus, uh, I love you uh, this morning. Praise the Lord. So a wise son, a wise person, and yeah, praise the Lord, a wise person goes to church. I do think they do that. A wise person loves Jesus. But here the Bible tells us that a wise son also uh, hears his father's instruction. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when it talks about a father's instruction, I think there are two different kind of ways, or maybe, maybe even multiple ways, that a father can teach. He can teach by instruction. He can teach by words. He can say, this is how you do this, and this is how you put this together, and this is what you ought to do to be successful, and you ought to take care of yourself and work hard and uh, put in effort and study and think and, and be intelligent, and you ought to not get in trouble or with the law, and you shouldn't steal other people's possessions. And, come on, right? You should love your neighbor as yourself and love your wife and love each other. And those are good instructions that are given by oral uh, ways. They're spoken instructions. And you know what you do? You'd be wise, and we'd be wise to listen uh, to our Father's instruction. And the truth is, if we'd have listened sometimes, if we'd have listened a long time ago, guess what? We wouldn't have been in so much trouble and so had so many problems if we'd have listened to the counsel of our dads. Amen. Uh, that's right. Uh, and so sometimes fathers teach by words. But I think also they just simply sometimes teach by the way that they live uh, their lives. Amen. They teach by what they do. They're not saying anything. They're not instructing by the mouth. But they are just living their lives. And you watch that pattern. And you watch what they do and you watch how they behave and you watch how they handle themselves and you watch how they go to church and you watch how they worship God and you, you understand what I'm saying and so sometimes we teach by what we say and other times we teach by what we uh, do and, but the biggest trouble is when we begin to say stuff that we don't actually do Amen. 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 The, the biggest trouble is when we begin to say things, when we begin to tell somebody how to live their life and how to behave and how to handle themselves, when we don't actually do those things ourselves. That's what they call a hypocrite in my generation. That's what they call saying something but not doing it. That's what they call the, the, uh, being sort of hypocritical in our behavior. So what we need to do if we're going to teach anybody, what we need to do if we're going to instruct anybody is we need to tell them what they do, what they should do, and then live it before them as well. Don't tell me not to get drunk if you're getting drunk. Somebody say amen. It'd be better for every dad just to quit getting drunk. Amen. And then they can instruct them all. You might as well say amen. And then they can teach their children the right ways to go as well. Amen. So this morning being Father's Day, I want to preach on uh, the subject. Let me tell you uh, what my dad 
taught me. Let me tell you what my dad taught me. Oh, I did the same thing for Mother's Day, uh, but at that point nobody was in the building but me, so we just recorded the sermon and put it on YouTube. Uh, but here we are on Father's Day, and we get together to the house of the Lord, and so I'm going to teach you or preach on that subject. Let me tell you what my dad taught me. Now, then, when it comes to your parents, there's probably many lessons that they've taught you down throughout the line, down throughout your life, don't you think? Uh, but I can't preach for four hours, and so I'm going to just go pick on three of them, and then I will let you go home. First of all, my dad taught me to take care of the things that God has blessed me with by putting them back where they belong. Amen. Now, it's just a simple, it's just a simple, uh, a simple a method, it's just a simple life principle, but I can't tell you how many times I've been working around the house, and I'll look at the girls, I say, let me tell you what my dad taught me. Now, we're going to need that screwdriver tomorrow, so if we take that screwdriver and just throw it over there in the corner, but then when we go to look for it, we're not going to have it. So let me tell you what my dad taught me. Now, we ought to take that screwdriver and we ought to put it back where it belongs, and then when you put it back where it belongs, guess what you'll do? You'll be able to walk over there tomorrow and the next day and the next day and find it every time because you took care of what God has blessed you with, and you put it back where it belongs. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I must say that I have but I do not always obey. <laughs> Come on. That, that, that principle. Uh, whenever I know my dad's coming over that, to my house, if I know he's going to my garage, I try to go tidy it up real quick, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Amen. Uh, because I, listen, I, I've learned the principle, but sometimes I'm having trouble putting it into practice. Amen. But I've never seen a time my dad was pretty, my dad is uh, pretty much it man for in my, in my life if I need a, a, a roof put on I call my dad if I need my car fixed I call my dad he can fix just about anything uh, it seems like to me and so I call him so he's got all these tools and I never and I've worked with him I look work alongside of him and I've never to my knowledge ever been working alongside of him and the screwdrivers weren't exactly where they were supposed to be and, 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 and the saw wasn't exactly where it was supposed to be and the nails weren't exactly where they were supposed to be and much I could walk in the garage for the most part if Matthew ain't living there. <laughs> when Matthew stayed for a little while, uh, then Matthew had to put some of his stuff in the garage so that I got confused. But for the most part, I can walk in uh, that garage and I can tell you exactly where stuff is at because it's been there for 30 years in the same exact spot. Amen. And you know what? You never have to look for something that way. And it's just a good principle to live by. You ought to take God has blessed you with. And if you take care of the things God has blessed you with, they'll live through to through the next day and the next day and the next day. You'll know exactly where they are. You'll know exactly where to find them. And they'll always be there. But sometimes when we begin to live in a way that we take things for granted and we got so much money that we can just rebuy it and re and re and re and, re and repurchase it, then all of a sudden we start throwing things and not taking care of things. And I think sometimes that's the way people treat God. They think that they can just not take care of Uh, let me turn, turn with me, if you will, to the book of Proverbs. I'm afraid we are living in a, in a time when people, and in fact it's been this way for, for years, when people treat God as sort of a spare tire. Amen. Uh, they, they call him when they need him, but as long as life's going pretty good and they don't need him, uh, they don't call him very much. Uh, I don't think that's the way God should be treated. Right. I don't think that's the way you should honor God. I think the way you should honor God is by putting some effort, some consistent effort into your walk with Him, taking care of your relationship with Him, Amen. and honor Him. Go with me to Proverbs chapter number 1, and I'll uh, read Amen. some verses here. Proverbs chapter number 1, verse 24. I think I was in the right book and then I flipped over to Psalms. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 24. The Bible reads, Because I have called and ye refuse. Here's God and here is the ultimate father. Because the truth is whether you had uh, the best father in the world or whether your dad fell short in a lot of ways and there's a lot of different gamuts 
parents of uh, 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 fathers. And, and I understand that. Uh, uh, but what the truth is uh, that, that, that no matter where your father has fallen at in your life, this is the truth. God is the ultimate father. God will never let you down. God loves you always. God wants to help you. God will, uh, will be there for you. But we need to take care of our relationship with our Heavenly Father. What do you think? Amen. 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 The Bible says, because I have called and you refuse. So here's the Father, and He's calling, but here's what people do. They refuse. Now, you may be doing that this morning, because God may be calling you to, to, to Himself and saying, I want a relationship with you. God may be calling you to Himself and saying, I want you to repent, and I want you to get rid of that thing that's unpleasing to me. And here's what sometimes we do. We just refuse. We've already made up our minds. We've already stubborn our course. We've already hardened our hearts, and we just refuse to get right. And God said, I've called, and ye refused. I have stretched out the I, would, I have stretched out, uh, let me see, read that again. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded it. So here's what God's doing. He's stretching out his hand. Here's what God is doing to America. He's stretching out his hand. He's saying, repent. He's saying, you can't do it on your own. He's saying, pandemics are too much for you. Even in all your science, even in all your sanitizing, even in all your six foot distancing, even in all of that stuff, it's still too much for you. You need me. And so if you don't believe me, then the next, the next uh, thing will kill a nation. And what is God doing? God is trying to get people to look to him. He's stretching out his hand. I can almost see the hand of the Father stretched down in the middle of a nation. And yet people are just walking all around him. He's calling and they refuse. He's stretching out his hand and they don't regard it. Amen. He says in verse 25, but ye have said it not at all my counsel. You think we're doing that as a society? Yes, sir. Saying at naught and making nothing of God's counsel. Yeah. Nothing of God's standards. Nothing of what God says. I wonder sometimes if people ever ask themselves when they get ready to make a Supreme Court ruling, what does God say? Yeah, come on, right back. Amen. I wonder sometimes if there are people ever ask themselves when they get ready to run for political office, what does God say? And so here's what he says. He says, you've said it not my counsel. You made it nothing. You laugh at it. You mock it. You tear down the Ten Commandments. You tear down my word. You, you vanquish prayer from the school. You push me out. I stretch my hand and you don't even regard it. Verse 26, I guess is what God says. I also will laugh at your what? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, I didn't write that. Wow. I will laugh, God says, at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. I will also laugh at your calamity, verse 26. I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they shall call upon me, but I will not answer. You know what God is describing? He's describing spare, tire Christianity. You're going to pull me out when you need me and turn me away and forget about me. And you can't. I got off track, but here we go. What's the first thing my dad taught me as a kid growing up and still today? I should take care of the things that God has blessed me with by putting them back where they belong. Right. And, I, and then ultimately I should take care of my relationship with God right. as a result of it. We came home yesterday and uh, we, we pulled in my driveway and we had a bunch of luggage on the top of the van. And so I knew we needed my little step ladder, which was in my garage, which I hang on the wall in the same spot. Uh -huh. <laughs> because Dad taught me to. Right. And I knew we needed it, so I went and got it, and I and I you we used it to take the luggage down. And then before my dad left, he looked at me and said, "You want to go put that ladder back up?" <laughs> I think, "No, Dad, I got it." Yeah. <laughs> 
It's that same, it's that same lesson. Put things back where they belong and right. they'll be there for you uh, tomorrow. Amen. Now that ladder, by the way, is no is not still in my yard. I put it back. <laughs> but it sat there for three, four, five hours. <laughs> anyway, and number two, uh, I also want to say this. My dad told me that steady, consistent effort wins the race. Yeah, right. Steady, consistent effort wins the race. What do you mean, Brother Jason? Listen, in my church time, and in my life as a Christian, I've seen a lot of people come into church, Brother Paul, and all they, and they got real fired up, and they got real passionate, right. and they got real excited, and they said, yeah. that's what we ought to do. We ought to, I mean, I'm over-exaggerating, but we ought to quit our jobs, and we ought to stay on the altar, and we ought to just pray until God comes down. But I tell you what, God doesn't run vacuum cleaners. you got to run the vacuum cleaner. So you got to have prayer in the right proportion and then go run that vacuum cleaner if you want. Come on, if you want that floor to be clean. God doesn't to, to clean toilets. So we got to at some point, we got to get them off the prayer altar and go clean the toilet. Amen. God doesn't sanitize microphones. We, at some point, we got to get them off the prayer altar and we got to sanitize the microphones. And so I watch people come in and got full of fire and full of passion and they said, man, here's what we ought to do. We all just pray and and we all just get just go so so fired up. We ought to quit our jobs and give all of our belongings away and give them yeah, yeah. And here's what happens, Brother Bob. They get real excited for a little while, and then they look at me when I get up off the prayer altar to go clean the toilet. As if I'm some sort of backslidden Christian. And I think to myself, I've seen you a thousand times. Here's what's gonna happen. You'll be excited for a little while, and then you'll fade out. You'll you'll blow in, blow up, and then blow out. And then I discovered on the course of my life and here's what my dad taught me the way that you walk with God is not by blowing up and blowing out you walk with God by steady yeah, consistent Lord. daily effort in your walk with God and that is the way you will walk from the time you got saved at 19 all the way until you yeah. take your last breath in the name and look into the next life and say how did I get here I got here because Jesus saved me but because I walked with him and he enabled me to yeah, stay walk every day with him and one day turned into two days and two days into three days and I look back over the course of my life now and I've been walking with Jesus for 50 years how did I get here but it's been a thousand that blew up and blew out and they're not even there anymore but I'm still here how because steady consistent effort wins the race Amen. Come on. Amen. That's right. I was watching this turtle the other day. Brother Bob and this turtle, man, this, this thing was moving so slow. And in the, same, in the same area, I was watching this rabbit. And this rabbit was moving so fast. Mm -hmm. And the turtle was moving slow, and the rabbit was moving fast. Uh, and I asked myself the question, I wonder what that rabbit thinks about the, about the pace of that turtle. I wonder if that turtle wants to be quick like the rabbit. But here's what I discovered, Brother Bob, uh, is a lot of times that rabbit is going to get tired quick. But that turtle is just going to keep putting effort. He, he may be slow, but he's going to keep walking. He may be slow, but he's going to keep going. And you know how I've lived for let Jesus for 15 years? You know why I've seen other people backslide and go back to the tavern, but I haven't? You know why I've seen other people backslide and go back to booze and women and all this other stuff, but I haven't? It's not because I'm special. It's because my dad told me to stay daily, just daily walking with God. A slow pace, but in the end, I'm going to get to heaven. Hallelujah. And sometimes people get so excited, even about Bible reading, they get so excited to read their Bible or to study the Bible. Say, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna study the Bible for seven hours a day. Guess what happened? I'll give you about three days. Right. Three days. I'm, 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 I'm gonna read the Bible. I'm gonna read the entire Bible through in in, in, in six weeks. <laughs> okay. They get excited. And in that moment of excitement, they almost look at you like you're backslidden if you won't do it with them. But I tell you what, listen, I know what's going to happen. You're going to fizzle out. You can't, it's not sustainable. You can't do that over the long term. But Brother Bob, I can wake up in the morning and I can read a few chapters and I can talk to Jesus and I can study the scriptures and I can put them some slow, it may be slow to somebody, but I'm still here after 50 years. Yeah. 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 
wins the race. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible. Hallelujah. Y'all glad for the Bible? Amen. Praise the Bible talks about daily singing. Psalm 61 and 8. Do you say daily sing with God? Yes, sir. Sing to God. I try to. I can't sing a bit. I can't sing. I can't even hold a tune in a bucket. But I try to figure out something to sing to Jesus every day. Because I think you may not like to hear me sing, but he does. You may not think my voice is good, but he does. And so I look for a song to sing to him every day. And I begin to sing to Jesus. And I and Sister Annie, I've been able to continue to sing for now 22 years of my life as I've been walking with God. 15 of them as I've been preaching. And I continue to walk with God, not because I recognized that the toilet still had to be clean and the grass still had to be mowed, but I still need to take care of my relationship with God by slow, even sometimes, but steady and consistent application with God. Amen. Amen. The Bible talks about daily singing, daily singing, daily performance. Daily prayer, daily mercy, daily seeking God, and then God daily loading me with benefits. Glory, Glory. 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 The, the second last I taught, I, my, my dad taught me, was steady, consistent effort wins the race. Yes. I can't tell you how many times I thought to myself, and I, and I, and I talk about the people that fizzled in, in, in the rabbit style pace, but the truth is I've been one of them before. I've, been, I've gotten real excited. Okay, I'm going to stay on my face before God until God comes down. Yeah. I'm going to stay on my face before God until this happens. And I give it, I give it a few days and I fizzle out. But here's what I've learned to do. Uh, because of, the, because of the, uh, the, the example of my dad, I've learned to just pull back a little bit Amen. and steady walk with God. The third thing yes, that I yes. have learned from my dad, my dad taught me was to cover everything in prayer. Amen. Cover everything in prayer. I'm sure I probably always saw this lesson from my dad, but I never really paid attention to it until I was about 19 years old. Uh -huh. And it's the first time I ever really, and I ever really remember standing out in my mind, 19, 20 years old. I was still a, a walking with the devil at that time. And my dad decided he was going to put a new roof on his house. And we, was, we had a bunch of friends come over. We, we, I was a sinner, so I was running with sinners, you understand, right? Yeah. I, that's the people I had yeah. common ground with. And so, right. But they were good people. They just were sinners. And so uh, they, they, they still know Jesus. And so that's the crowd I was running with. And they were good enough to come over and give my dad a hand. And so we was all working. We got done, we got done with the roof. And as soon as we got done with the roof, I, we were planning on going out and doing sinful things, you understand? Right. Uh, and my, my dad, we got through, through probably four, five, six of these guys. I was standing around me, my brothers, and my dad looks at we get done with the job. My dad looks at all these sinner boys, <laughs> and me being a sinner boy myself at this point, bachelor anyway, uh, and he said, looked at them all and he said, Here's what I want you to do. Here's what we need to do. We need to all hold hands and we need to thank God for helping us to get there. Yeah. 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 I thought to myself, Dad, Dad, I'm trying to go sit and you're trying to pray. Right? So, but sometimes the prayers of dads and moms sort of have an ability to hinder a little bit of that sin. So we better start praying, and we better keep praying. Amen. And so my dad said, you, 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 I, I want to I have God prayer. And I, thought myself, I actually thought to myself, I, I don't think I've ever told him this, but at that time I was sort of embarrassed by it. Because I was wanting to sin and he was willing to pray. Right. And I thought sin was cool, but he thought prayer was cool. Amen. Right. And I knew my friends didn't think prayer was cool. They thought sin was cool. And I felt a little embarrassed because he was wanting to pray and I was going to sin. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Uh, and after, after the fact, I talked to one of my friends. I said, hey, what, what do you think about my dad praying? And this boy was a sinner. He still is to this day. And he said, I think it was a good thing. <laughs> I think it's a good thing. You know why? Because his dad never prayed with him. And his dad never taught him to pray. And his dad never talked him to pray. To church, and so all of a sudden they get around a parent that does. They recognize there's something different here, and it feels good to talk to God. It feels good to know God. It feels good to have God involved in my life. Hallelujah! You understand what I'm saying? So, so, so I've learned from my dad over the years to cover everything in prayer. Amen. I got to go out on vacation, and, and, and they, my dad came over with the van, and we loaded the luggage over on the top of the van. And we got done loading it up, we strapped it down, and my dad said to me and Rashonda, 
I don't know if the girls are out there at the time or not, but were you guys out there at the time? Okay, you said all of us. Y'all want to have prayer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dad, all we did was blow luggage on the road. <laughs> you you want to have prayer? <laughs> okay. So we stood out in the front yard and we held hands and we had prayer. We yes, called on Jesus. And you know, at the time, I think to myself, man, Dad, don't you know that I, I just want to know the luggage on top of the van? I'm glad for that. But I got about 75 other things waiting for me before 3 a.m. before we take off to go to Tennessee. And you want to have you want to have prayer? I tell you what, he's just he taught me over the life of my life that, that the other things you got waiting on you, they'll go a lot smoother. And Jesus is in all We got ready to head down the mountain yesterday, <coughs> leaving the cabin. And my dad said to me, said, it's four o'clock in the morning again. <laughs> he said to me, y'all want to have prayer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see, because we had gone down that mountain, and they'd tell me that the way I drive, we could have went over the side of the mountain any given time. <laughs> and so I'm thinking he really thought we needed to have prayer. <laughs> yeah. So y'all want to have prayer? I said, yeah. Yeah, let's pray. And I did. I, I, I won the paper. Yeah. Yes. Amen. We got home, pulled up my driveway, unloaded the luggage. They was getting ready to take the van back to their house and unload their, their, their luggage and stuff. And my dad, so we prayed for protection for the ride home yeah. up on top of the mountain. Drove nine hours, whatever it was, back to Michigan, got back to Michigan safely because God answers prayer. Yes, sir. And he said, I think we ought to just pause, hold hands. And we'll thank God for keeping us safe. Yes, sir. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Here's what, I, here's what I learned from my dad. One of the things. I should cover everything yeah. in prayer. In prayer. Oh, glory. Lord. Thank you, Lord. We get ready to work on something. If we don't know what to do, here's the first thing I do. I go to YouTube. Here's the first thing my dad does. He goes to Jesus. I think we all pray about this. But dad said, let's pause and pray. And we'll pause and pray. And like Brother Bob said this morning, Brother Larry, Brother Bob, Brother Bob said it before, Brother Larry said it this morning, pause and pray and even ask God to help you in the matters such as fixing things and working on things. And yes. all of a sudden ideas will come and wisdom will come yeah, and Lord, things Lord, will come. Lord. They were there the whole time, but unless you involve God, you're going to miss it. Yes. We need to cover everything in prayer. Yes, we do. Right now, I think we ought to cover, in this particular time in our nation's history, we ought to cover our nation. In the name of Jesus. Oh, the blood we pray, Lord. It looks to me like the nation is at a tipping point. Yes, sir. It's either going to go one of two directions. And I don't see much common ground, and I don't see much room for compromise, because people aren't willing to compromise. No. It's just a constant fight and a constant battle. And our nation desperately needs prayer. So over the course of this week and over the course of your life, I beseech you, cover your nation in prayer. Because oh, we desperately God, need Jesus, the intervention Amen. of God. God, we love you. We thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for your blessings upon us. We thank you, God, for the testimony of Scripture and for the testimony, God.